Right, we're going to talk about methods or ways to prepare salts. Now, before we do that, you need to decide with yourself what your product is. Is your salt product soluble or insoluble? All right. Once you've made up that mind, you also need to determine if the reactants that you've used, the reagents that you've used, whether that reagent, especially the base, is soluble or insoluble. With that in mind, then you can decide which method you're going to use to prepare that salt. So the first method is in, involves mixing soluble acids with a soluble base, which is an alkali. The classic example is the process called titration. Titration. Now, the procedure to make this is that you put an exact amount of acid of known concentration into your conical flask and you put an indicator such as methyl orange and what you see in this solution is that it should be a uh, pink okay now you will put your sodium hydroxide or your soluble base into your burette this alkali here will be titrated into a conical flask that has your hydrochloric acid or your acid or whatever it is okay i'm using hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide as examples it could be many other types of acids or bases all right once the uh, color of the indicator has changed just slightly like this little uh, sample that you guys have made here once it's, it has been neutralized you can stop the reaction by turning off the stopper. Now, in this stage, you could probably do it twice. The first trial is to do a very quick run just to get a broad estimation of how much alkali you've used to neutralize the acid in the conical flask. And the second time, you would, once you've reached that uh, range of where the color of this solution in here changed, you will stop and you will add little by little until you get this perfect color you guys have, have made. So, once you've done that, you will stop the titration and you will measure, you will see how much alkali you used. And then, on the next trial, you will prepare the same method of putting the acid into the conical flask. But this time, you don't put in the indicator. You will titrate this exact amount of alkali that you've, you've um, done in the first trial, and the solution that you have in there should be neutral. You pour that neutral solution onto an evaporating dish, you heat it up, and then when it's just has a little bit of water left, you will put it into a crystallizing dish to allow it to form crystals. The, the next method of making salt is to make an insoluble salt. This time you have two soluble substances or salts. You will mix them together and what you have, you, you get, you mix them together and what you get is a precipitate, a very murky whatever color precipitate and that precipitate you can filter it out the waste is soluble which is the other soluble salt is collected here and then your desired salt is up here as the residue you would put that and allow to put the residue here and allow the insoluble salt to dry out so it should probably be like like looks like a powder form all right it's going to be hard to crystallized insoluble salts. Okay. Third method. You in the third method is to use soluble acids mixing with metal, metal carbonates or metal oxides. Now the metal carbonates or metal oxides could be soluble or it could be insoluble. It doesn't matter. What you do is you have a beaker with your you have your beaker with your dissolved, with your acid, and then you're going to put um, an, um, 
I guess an excess amount of uh, your metal, metal carbonate or metal oxide into that beaker, you may heat up the, this reaction to promote the reaction to, to go faster. And once that's this solution here, the, you notice that your metal or your metal carbonate or your metal oxide is not reacting anymore with the acid. That means it has, the, the acid has been completely neutralized into becoming a salt. And you're going to see uh, if those metal, metal carbonates or metal oxides are solids, then you're going to see murkiness or precipitate in the beaker. You will filter it out like you normally would. What you have in here is a soluble salt. This excess here is this excess here is your starting material, your metal carbonates or your metal oxides, and the soluble salts are in here. You can heat up this thing. I put here, I put this in an evaporating dish. You can heat it up and then until you have just a little bit of water left and you can crystallize it. Okay? The final method is to, when you can't use any salts or acids as your starting material, you can use elements to enforce them to react with each other to form salts. Here I have a non-metal and a metal. The non-metal example is a chlorine gas. So I pushed chlorine gas through this closed system. Now, even though the drawing is not closed, it's actually all tight, nice and tight, and it's this in the, should be in a fume hood because you're working with chlorine gas. So you pass a gas or, or whatever non-metal element that you have in here and you pass it through the metal element. Uh, I've added heat here so that it can, it will react with the non-metal. And what you have is here, you're forcing the, one of the reactants in here and it should come up in here on the other side of this uh, Pyrex tube. And you can collect your salt over here when it, the gas is formed, it condenses to form solids. And here is just a, a waste where your waste gas can come out. So in this example, I've used chlorine gas passing through pieces of aluminum. And then what I got out here is aluminum chloride. And where the aluminum is, you have I heated it up. So there you go. Four methods to make soluble salts. Oh, I mean salts.